I read the book of John chapter 15 and the word of God reads Jesus said I am the true vine and my father is the husband man every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away amen and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Thank God. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and that they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you may bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friends. Amen. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. Brother Ronald, could you come, please take this word before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that you have done so far. Thank you, God. For what you're about to do. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for all the doors that you have opened and all the doors that you have closed. And Father, as we are about to receive this word, mm. this mighty word, as you said, the word is the spirit, is everything. And Father God, we want you to, to, to guide us. Send this word out that it could bless somebody in the heart, that they could in return bless somebody else. Yes, Father God, we thank you for this great man. Thank you, and what you have done in his life that he could share the word in such a true full way that we could understand it yes, Lord. And we ask this in no other name but your son name we ask this in jesus christ of nazareth Thank we you. ask it in his name amen amen, amen. amen. in verse one jesus said i am the true vine now the term vine in the Old Testament is used as a, a metaphor for Israel, the Old Testament church in the wilderness. But when Jesus described himself in the New Testament, 
as the true vine, he fulfilled the prophecy in which the Old Testament church, Israel, has failed. So Jesus is the true vine. Amen. Jesus is the true church. Amen. Jesus is the true Israel. Amen. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church upon this rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus concluded verse 1, amen, by saying, and my father is the husbandman. Now, not carefully, Jesus called his father the husbandman. Now, the term husbandman pertained to God himself as the gardener or the vine dresser who cultivate and prune. Now, God is not only the gardener, but God is also the owner of the branches which represent the believers. In verse 2, Jesus said, And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, not carefully, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purge, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Now, in this verse, Jesus speaks of two distinct branches. Fruitless branches and the fruitful branches. Fruitless branches and the fruitful branches. Now, the branch that Jesus take away does, that does not bear fruit pertain to those who profess to be Christians, but they are not. Instead, they are out of fellowship and contact with the true vine, Jesus Christ. Therefore, they are useless as branches that produce no fruit. Now by the word take away, God, who is the husbandman, or the gardener, amen, or the vine dresser, remove the fruitless professing Christians from the fruitful believers who bear fruit. Now this is in conformity to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13. This is what Jesus said. Every plant which my father has not planted shall be uprooted. Jesus continued, amen, in verse 2 he says, And every branch that beareth fruit he purge. Every branch that beareth fruit he purge. Now, in the natural, this is how the purging or the pruning is done. The gardener would cut off live branches from the vine in order to improve its fruitfulness. Amen. Now, the live branches that the gardener cut off becomes useless and good for nothing. They are impure and undesirable. Now, if these branches the gardener cut off remain with the branches that were purged or pruned, this would cause contamination. Amen? And would hinder the growth of the branches that were pruned or purged. Now, church, this is the result of the branches that were purged or pruned. Notice Jesus said that it may bring forth more fruit. Now this means the purge believers becomes more fruitful. Listen, when the fruitful believers are purged, nothing should hinder the vital flow of Christ who is the true vine into 
our lives. Now, this in verse 3, this is what Jesus said to the branches that bear fruit. This is good news. He said, now you are clean through the word God, which I have spoken unto you. That's why it is important to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. How can they hear without a preacher? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, not carefully. The poison, the poison produce fruitful believers. And the poison is done through the word of God. You see, it is the word of God that cleanses the life of the fruitful believers that is bearing fruit. The more you bear fruit, the more you have been purged. Amen? The purging, it keeps our life clean through the word of God and it enables us to resist the temptation of sin. Amen? Praise God. And to yield to the direction of the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I abide in you. He said, Abide in me, and I abide in you. Now, this speaks of relationship between the vine, who is Jesus Christ, and the branches that represent the born-again Christians. Now, when God said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, let us make man in our own image and likeness, this means we were created to have a divine relationship with God. Now, church, some people may not have a relationship with God, but everyone nevertheless was created to have a relationship with God. Why? Because he is our creator. You see, God is infinite and man is finite. So it takes an infinite man, a finite man rather, to have a relationship with an infinite God. Now, relationship has to do with connection affiliation and association yeah. relationship is something that two or more person establish and usually by choice now if the branches watch this is out of fellowship with the true vine they would be useless to Jesus Christ who is the true vine amen let me say that again. Amen. Praise God. If the branch is out of fellowship with the true vine, Jesus Christ, they would be useless. Amen. To him. Amen. Praise God. Now, Jesus continue. He said, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. You can't serve God by yourself. Amen, praise God. Now, in the natural, a branch has life as long as the life of the vine flow into it. Now, when applied spiritually, the born-again Christian has the life of Christ flowing into him as long as he is abiding in Christ, the true vine. Uh, now, specifically, Jesus alone is the source of this life. Jesus Christ is the source of this spiritual vitality and the fruitfulness. You see, the branch that bears fruit is a symbol of God's holiness and his righteousness. That's why the Bible says, be holy because I am holy. You can be holy in the midst of the storms that you are going through. In the midst of adversities. In the midst of trials, praise God. You can still maintain your holiness. Amen, praise God. And righteousness. In verse 5, 
Jesus said, I am divine. You are the branches. Now Jesus used both the vine and the branches to show that we must live and remain in him. Regardless of the circumstances in life, we must continue to anchor in him by faith. Because Jesus is the main vine and we the believers are compared to the branches that bear fruit. Now, Jesus continued. He said, He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. Now, Jesus even used the image of the vine and the branches to describe his relationship with us, the believers. Now, abiding in Christ also result in Jesus continually in dwelling in us, amen, on, on the basis of this relationship, we comfort sin. And that's why the Bible says, nay, in all of these things that we are going through, we are more than a conqueror. Amen, pray, not just a conqueror, but we are more than a conqueror. I always say that a conqueror has a survival instinct. A conqueror has a winner's mentality. Pray that defeat the prayer is an insult to a conqueror. Amen. That's why you have to continue to win. Amen. 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 Praise God. In verse 6, Jesus said, If a man abide not in me, watch this now, he is cast forth as a branch, amen, and is withered. That's terrible. Now, these branches that he cast forth don't represent the true believers, or else he would not have cast them out. Praise God. But they represent professing Christians who do not abide in the vine. Mm, hallelujah. Now, church, this is the consequences, amen, and of course, failure not to abide in Christ. Jesus concludes this verse by saying, watch this now, and men gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are born. Now, spiritually, this pertains to the judgment of of the professing Christians. No doubt, God will judge them that bear no fruit. He will reject them and they will be destroyed by fire. Amen. Jesus' teaching is rough. Yes. That's why some people should have quoted it. Yes. Because they know that his teachings is rough. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It don't mean things up. Praise God. Amen. Notice. Jesus continued in verse 7. He said, If you abide in me, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now the question is, how do we ask? We ask in prayer. Now the secret to your prayer being answered is when God's word is abiding in us that is in our spirit. Listen to this church. Knowing God's word will control and guide our prayer life. To have an effective prayer life, brethren, we have to know the word of God. When we pray according to God's word that is abiding in us, God will answer our prayer. Now, let us go further down in this chapter and focus on verse 15 and 16. Amen. Notice Jesus said something here that captured my attention. He said, and henceforth I call you not servants for a servant know not what his Lord doeth. Hmm. Now, a servant is hired to do what his master commanded him to do. Now, being a servant of God, amen, but then was not a title of shame, 
But being a servant of God was a, a title of the highest order. For example, Moses, Joshua, Amen, David, they were all called servants of the Most High God. Amen. Praise God. And I believe they were proud to be called servants of the Most High God. However, in the New Testament, according to this verse, Jesus told his disciples, but I call you friends. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. I have called you friends. <laughs> Amen. I'm no longer calling you servants, but I have called you friends. The song said, I'm a friend of God. Amen. Amen. No. Jesus calling his disciples friends is a greatest title than that of a servant. Why? Because Jesus takes us into confidence. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Because it is a more personal and intimate relationship of God Hallelujah. with him. Amen. Praise God. It is far more privileged than being a servant. How many of you know it is refreshing to learn that Jesus himself consider us to be his friend. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But to the disciples and us, we must be servants to each other. Amen. Amen. I was called to serve you. Not to exercise lordship over you. Amen. Praise God. We were called to serve one another yes. in this ministry. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Don't you ever see your pastor high and mighty over you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See me as a praise God, your pastor and your humble servant. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in verse 15, Jesus told his disciples, watch this now, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Hallelujah. What a privilege, amen? So, the disciples did not choose the Lord, and we too did not choose the Lord. But by choice, the Lord chose you. He chose us. Amen. You see, oh God, the initiative of salvation always begins with the Lord. Amen? Amen? That's why the Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and a holy nation to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous life. Who called us? Hallelujah. The Lord called us out of darkness. When God called us out of darkness, brother, yeah. that means we have to stop practicing sin. Yes. Oh God, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Church, God loves us and choose us before we know him. Yeah. Amen. God knows us before he sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 says, God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now, this occurred before creation. Therefore, God already knew who would believe in him. Amen. The Lord knows all those who belong to him. That's why church is a serious thing. Amen. Amen. The angels that are here right now, praise God, they know, praise God, whether your heart is in the service or not. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, God told the prophet Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee, watch this, and before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee to be a prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. All this took place before creation. Amen. Amen. No, 
how the word knew pertain to God for knowledge of the prophet Jeremiah. Which means, amen, only God knows what kind of prophet Jeremiah would be. Amen. God knows what kind of, praise God, of people or individual that we will be before creation. Now, just as God has a plan for Jeremiah's life before he was born, so does God for all of us. Amen. But what's this church? But God's plan will only be fulfilled in our lives when we live in full obedience to his word. Obedience to God's word, it brings the blessings. God bless us through his word. I said God bless us through his word. Amen. Listen to this. But God <laughs> did not choose us to remain in our comfort zone. <laughs> I said God did not choose us to remain in our comfort zone. But God has chosen us for a purpose. Do you want to know what is that purpose? Say a verse says and that is to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Yeah. Now, one of the way to win others to Christ is when they see the Christ bearing fruit of the Spirit operating in our lives. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We are fruit bearing Spiritual advertisement. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, watch this. Jesus did not send us to argument into the kingdom, but to attract them by the fruit of the Spirit that is active in our lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. Hallelujah. Finally, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, what is now? What do you find this? It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Now, notice the word fruit. The word fruit is singular. So, the fruit of the spirit are not fruits, but rather fruit. So, they are to be looked at as a whole fruit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the fruit on a tree, it takes time to grow and mature. Therefore, the Holy Spirit does not cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives overnight. It takes time, brother. It takes time, sister. Amen. Praise God. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is produced by the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And finally, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 17, I'm going to close here. Jesus said, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Fruit. Now, the good tree that bringeth forth good fruit represent the children of the kingdom of light. Amen. And the corrupt tree that bringeth forth evil fruit represent children of the kingdom of darkness. 
and the children of the kingdom of darkness need to come out, amen, of darkness into his marvelous light, amen. That is the only way they will be free, amen. Praise God. So to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for um, the testimony system.